Hello, this is Hayden Scott, Program Manager and Lead Instructor for EMS University San Antonio. We're now going to look at Lesson 5.1, uh, Bleeding and Shock. Physiology of hypoperfusion, or shock, um, is inadequate tissue perfusion, uh, which means there's inadequate delivery of O2 and nutrients to the body tissues, um, which also means that there's an inadequate elimination of metabolic waste. Um, the body will increase systemic vascular resistance when cardiac output is decreased. There are three stages of shock. Um, there's compensated, where the body is able to compensate uh, pretty well and maintain just, uh, adequate tissue perfusion. Um, and then there's decompensated, uh, where the body begins to lose its ability to, to um, maintain that tissue perfusion. Uh, so uh, you'll notice the inadequate perfusion starting. Um, and then there's irreversible. Uh, this is where the cell and tissue damage um, are so profuse that multi-system organ failure um, will happen and uh, death will occur pretty quickly. There are four classifications of shock. There's hypovolemic shock, which is uh, pretty well the um, classic, uh, classic type of shock that you're going to see. This occurs with blood loss and dehydration. Uh, then there's also obstructive shock. Uh, this is caused by pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, um, as well as car uh, cardiac tamponade. You'll see cardiogenic shock, which is uh, usually late, uh, late stages of congestive heart failure, um, heart disease, and an acute myocardial infarction. Uh, and then there's distributive shock. Uh, this, uh, there are three types, uh, neurogenic, anaphylactic, as well as septic shock. Uh, blood loss um, will occur from internal injuries, um, it's both solid and uh, hollow organs. Your liver and spleen are hollow. Um, they do actually contain a good majority of your red blood cells. So if one of them becomes dinger, uh, injured or ruptures, uh, you'll lose blood pretty quick. All of the shocks uh, pretty much present the same except for distributive shock. Um, first, uh, we're going to look at neurogenic shock. Um, the skin uh, with the areas of vasodilation, uh, at first they'll be warm pink and dry. Um, then later you'll notice the pooling um, and modeling of the dependent areas. Uh, you'll notice pallor and cyanosis as well to the upper surfaces. Um, the pulse will be highly variable depending on injury or action of drug or poison. Um, it really may be abnormally slow or abnormally fast, um, but usually it won't be uh, in that normal uh, range. Respirations will be severely compromised. Um, they'll become slow, very shallow. Um, you'll start to see the abnormal patterns. Usually with the um, neurogenic shock, you'll most likely see the uh, Shane Stokes respirations. Uh, then the patient will altogether lose their stimulus to breathe. Uh, this is when the assistive breathing with the BVM uh, comes into play. Uh, the patient could also experience hypothermia. Pulmonary edema may occur um, depending on uh, whether it's drug or poisoning induced. Next, we're going to look at anaphylactic shock um, caused by anaphylactic reaction uh, or a severe allergic reaction. The skin will present with hives, itching, um, possible petechiae. Um, you might also notice some flushing um, or uh, on the other extreme of that, you'll, you could potentially notice some pallor cyanosis, usually in the later stages. Um, the blood pressure uh, will very, very quickly drop, um, almost on the drop of a dime. So you, you have to keep an, uh, keep an eye on uh, vitals. Uh, usually you'll perform vitals every five minutes or so. Respirations will be rapid and shallow. Uh, you'll notice dyspnea with strider, um, which progresses into wheezing. Um, usually in the later stages you'll notice crackles um, and then uh, usually right on the heels of that, uh, will be respiratory arrest. Um, other signs are swelling of the mucous membranes, um, as well as pulmonary edema. Septic shock, um, 
obviously caused by an overwhelming ex uh, infection, also known as sepsis. The skin um, can be um, either very flush pink if a high fever is present, um, but usually um, once the once they hit the sepsis point, the, the fever will actually um, go the other direction and your patient will go pale and cyanotic. Uh, you might notice purple blotches, uh, appealing of the skin, uh, usually uh, tends to stick around the palms and the soles of the feet, but you can see um, general skin peeling. Um, uh, usually it'll start on the core if it's not on the palms and the soles. Uh, the blood pressure early on, um, cardiac outpost will increase, but the toxins will prevent um, the blood pressure to increase. Uh, however, late uh, in the in the sepsis uh, arena, you'll uh, see a rapid drop in blood pressure um, with some pretty severe hypotension. Um, the respiratory will obviously, you'll have some dyspnea with altered lung sounds. Uh, more often than not, you will hear the very wet lung sounds uh, along with the septic shock. Uh, again, uh, high fever. Uh, however, in Elderly and very young patients, um, it'll be the exact opposite, actually. Um, the uh, very late sign, uh, as I mentioned earlier, will be the pulmonary edema. Shock is a syndrome. Uh, in regards to trauma, the golden hour principle, uh, shock must be stopped within one hour of the cause. Um, once a traumatic incident occurs, uh, you have one hour to either prevent or stop shock. Uh, in the act, uh, if you uh, prefer your patient to live. Uh, you want to treat during transport whenever possible. Uh, don't take time on scene. Load them up and do whatever you can in the back of your truck. Uh, there's also the Platinum 10 principle, which means uh, no more than 10 minutes on scene. Uh, you want to do a pretty rapid diagnosis and field stable uh, uh, and field stabilization. Um, this is very, very critical. So, uh, you know, the quicker you can diagnose and stabilize um, and uh, get on your way, uh, the better off your patient's going to be in the end. This concludes uh, your uh, shock and bleeding section. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, refer them to your instructor of record. Thank you.